I need more poop though. Million subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Little dude's doing good. There's like 15 of these big dudes. No babies yet. Mr. Eel's doing okay. Eat more hair algae shrimps. That blue sheen to them. Dunk, 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 dunk. This is what fish do in the wild right there. The best guppies in the world, world, world. Hey everybody, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today, I'm showing off all the tanks. So much has changed. I went to Germany, I came back, I bought way too many fish. I've been setting up tanks. And stuff's growing in too, so I want to show you some cool stuff. Got a different camera, can zoom in a little more, hopefully can show a little more in depth on some stuff, and we'll see what I can find here in the fish room today. So I'm going to start from a different point. Normally I start from the other end, but on this end, I wanted to show off this, oh don't run, not today. This pleco, that's full, full grown, and yeah, it's a little bit uh, dim lit because it went into, out of the light, but that is a dwarf claro pleco. And uh, my goal is to breed them long term. So I've got a bunch in the fish room, but they don't they don't come out very often and they hide. So they were looking really good until they went hiding like that. But yeah, this tank has been doing pretty good. You know, I'm still losing a leaf here and there every once in a while, but the platies are starting to kick out babies. And that's what we want to see. Of course, you can't see a single one because that would be useful on camera. But we still got, you know, kind of shrimp mountain and everything going on. They love the lava rock. Lava rock is amazing for growing things like Anubias and other plants like that on there. And then also growing bacteria and just creating surface area. So as the algae grows, these shrimp are like, hey, I like to hang out here. And they can go inside in the caves and all of that. And uh, yeah, the fry, they keep coming in and out of like focus. So there's, there's some that keep going back there, but with this tank, the problem I have is I've got kind of too many rambunctious males. Uh, I might need to remove some. As you can see, they're always chasing the girls and they're gonna chase down Fry. So that might be the fate is move a couple of them, calm it down there, get some more babies. Cause once you get critical mass on babies, I can see them hiding in the plants. If you look back here, you can see them hiding. They don't wanna get chased down. That one's big enough not to be chased down, but you know, any other little babies would be. Now, in this tank with the ellipse for eel, again, we've got some babies here. We've got um, we've got some some platies, a little bit of funk going on. You can see that one's got a little bit of you know some fungusy fin type stuff. And same with that one. I've been treating it very slowly with some salt, and uh, they're just not as happy as they want to be. They're still kicking out fry, so that's good. Um, but Mr. Eel's doing okay. He's not picking up any funk and uh, You can see every once in a while bubbles lifting off the plants and as as <laughs> as Nick said from keeping fish simple is that bulbitis purling? Yeah, he's never seen it do it before and in my fish room I don't inject any co2 currently and so when you see the bubbles lifting off and there's not a lot going on in this tank We see some other tanks are purling pretty good uh, It's all natural well, all natural, oh, that's not right. But fertilizers and light and not injecting CO2, just happy plants. Happy plants is what I meant to say. I've got this cool new dB meter, which means nothing to you right now. But as I talk, it's measuring my voice. And if I stop talking, it'll measure like the ambient room. Now I've been doing quite a few tests and I've made a video for Facebook and long term, I'm gonna make a in-depth video for you guys, like on our air pumps and everything. And turns out Whisper air pumps are technically slightly louder than my air pumps. Uh, but it's so negligible, like you're, you're fine with either one. Mine just has battery backup and that kind of stuff. But uh, the reality is, you know, they're not louder. So if you got one that's like way loud or something, uh, take a video and we'll compare it and maybe you got a, a, a defect one or something. But I think people just hear air pumps differently and I wanna be able to, uh, I don't know, do some justice to it. So this tank's a little bit cloudy, as it always has been. This morning I caught a bunch of males out of here and took them to the store. And so you can see like, wow, there's not a lot of color in here right now. And that's true, but it's because uh, all the extra males. I, I chose for traits that I liked. I wanted to get more orange, if I could, into these fish. And so I was selecting for who's got more orange. And like, you know, some of these guys up here have got more orange. And so that's what I was selecting for. 
Yeah, there's a lot of shrimp in here. The crypts are still, like, they converted better, but they still haven't taken off. And I am going to swap the substrate out on this tank because no matter what I do, I can't get rid of the cloudiness. So I'm going to try. It worked on all the other tanks, so I'll give up and just, you know, go to a gravel. Over here, we've got these rad... Oh, no, I killed one. Well, I didn't kill it, but there's one dead. What happened, buddy? Quit eating your brother. Well, I've been making, well actually no, these are from Bob. I bought some more and I have seen some tiny fry in here, but those aren't them. So I'll be pulling that body afterwards, unfortunately. It'll be turtle food. And, uh, but this is the male that looks super cool with that orange and yellow. And you can see the, the younger ones are starting to develop as well. The val I keep trim back, you know, as it's right here, it's making a run for it. It's going, hey, it's going to trim, you know, it's going to come out here off to trim it back. But uh, I might swap this val for dwarf Sagittaria just so that uh, it doesn't always grow so long and block all the light. So over here at Turtle Mountain, that's where we are. And uh, yeah, little dude's doing good. So all the live bears are doing their thing. I don't think I've seen any fry be kicked out of that yet. You can see I've got the the easy flow, easy flowing. Quite a lot of current coming out of that bad boy. Sucking up a lot of turtle poops. No plants because these guys eat them. But getting some algae going, which is nice. That'll help kind of clean the water a little bit. All of these males, so they all were males of the Vienna guppies. These were all tiny, tiny fry when I set up the tank originally. Uh-oh, we got a turtle. He's, he's stuck. What are you doing, buddy? Are you gonna make me rescue you? Nope, you're fine. You're fine. You're a crying wolf. The best guppies in the world, world, world. Dragon mosaic guppies. These females, I just absolutely love. These are the females. That's what's crazy. Yes, there's a male up here, but those are the females. They're big, they're chunky, and they look great. I need more poop though. That is what I need. So you see my pygmy chain swords are sad, but I don't have very much poop in the gravel. And so really I want it to be like this kind of turtle poopy gravel where you can see the brown. You can see a little bit right on this side. So this is the corner I feed right here. So this is getting, getting poopy. And you can see towards the front right here, it's making more. So the new starts are looking great. But the old big ones we brought in from Murphy's tank, rest his soul, by the way, Murphy passed away. Sad times if you're not plugged into our social media at all. Uh, the plants are growing, but it's gonna take some time to get enough poop because I don't have very many fish in here. And so what you see is you actually see the plants purling, but you also see algae purling. So you can see the, the bubbles kind of lifting off there. And again, not a great example of the plants being super duper duper happy or anything, but uh, yeah, enjoying these guys. No one's been fed yet today, by the way. Over here, we've got way too many shrimps. Look at that, boom. Shrimp mountains. Everywhere shrimp mountain in this tank. Over here too. Got the black pan, or the black Moscow guppies. Now last time I showed these guys, off, I said, hey, I, whenever I breed them, I end up running into like albinos. And like the two crotchety guys in the crowd said, I've been breeding those for 700 years and it's never done that. And then as I was doing a tour with Keeping Fish Simple, we saw them. I have albinos in here. I got to catch them out, but they're few and far between. Like there's one, that little baby right there. Look at that guy. Yep. And there's one that's bigger but you gotta like stare at the tank and he pops out. I think he knows he's albino and he's the odd man out. And he's, he's, he's playing it cool. He knows, he's on the radar. But uh, yeah, I mean like one out of, uh, here's another one right here too. Way in the back. Look at that, al oh, too much zoom. Look at that albino. Well, not, not albino, uh, cause they do have a black eye still. Melanistic? They come out blonde. Let's call it blonde. These ones are coming out blonde. I have had true albinos come out as well. Um, but if you don't remove that from a tank like this, eventually it's going to muddy up your mix a ton. What I will point out here, look how rad these crypts are doing. It is Crypt Town. These were all freshly planted, so you can see the immersed leaves when we planted it. 
That leaf's gonna die back, that snail's gonna munch it, which is good. And I'm gonna get all these rad leaves right here, right? And so, what is so different between this tank and the other tanks of crypts I've been trying to do? And the answer is, kind of nothing other than the substrate. So maybe my sand substrate, even though it's coarse, is like choking it out in the other tank, even though I grew it in that substrate for five years in my old house. Didn't have a problem. And at the store, didn't have a problem. But I, I can't imagine same exact light, same exact uh, like crypts, same water, same tank. And there's that much difference between this and the struggling ones over there. Don't know. Over here, different crypt. Crypt Lutea. But these crypts have not gotten as robust. Like, they are converting, but they're not nearly as good. That being said, the Hygro Pinnatifida growing pretty good. Wants to be a little more pink. I dosed a little bit of iron in here this week just to give it a little oomph. You can see... It's releasing oxygen, purling away in this tank. Again, not, not a massive amount. Later in the day, it does it a little bit more. You can kind of see if you can get it far enough away. Of course, now I like, can't even see it, so maybe it doesn't display on camera, but got these like gold snake skinny type guppies in here. This female is gonna burst with like 300, not 300, but like 100 babies. And there is lots of fry in the weeds. And that's, that's one of the reasons I like the plants. The plants are cover and also something to look at. And I like that. So this tank will keep going gangbusters and eventually it should look pretty good. All right, and then over here we've got Hair Algae City still. Got the shrimps eating on it. Eat more Hair Algae shrimps. But up top we've got some growing in the back. We've got some over here. The Libia Perugiae, growing like gangbusters, throwing fry, they're doing their thing. And the Dwarf Sagittaria, what I think is funny, is it's staying pretty short here. But in a tank down the way, it's getting super duper long. Irritating. When it was only ever growing short for me before. I need to get like uh, one like Siamese algae eater or a flagfish in here just to help get that algae under control. And uh, yeah, so you can see just... You know, there's a little baby fry going in between the gravel. Hey, Team Gravel, let's do that. Provide cover. The tannins still tanning. All of the baby uh, black chin libraries have grown up. I need to catch those out. And then the panda cories, they're still hiding. Oh, well, there's, there's a couple, I guess. I, I lied. But they're not moving as a team like I want them to. I think the Limia Perugia, a little, little feisty. But look how good they look. They're so fast. That blue sheen to them. Uh, I got these from Dan's Fish. A lot of the fish I've gotten from Dan's Fish, actually. And yes, we do have a partnership. If you use our code Aquarium Coop, you do save 5%. We get a cut. And uh, yeah. This tank, oddly enough, all this algae like came two days ago. It was running really nice. And then now I've got this bloom. So I got I to gotta do a little bit of work. Maybe get someone in to help in there and eat it. And, uh, yeah, but I've got the Betta Pugnax, that's what these mouth brooding Bettas are, and they've been just releasing fry, so you can see little different batches of fry that didn't get eaten by the buffalo head cichlids. There's two or three little brothers and sisters of different batches. You can see them just kind of darting around in there, and then there's like a bigger one somewhere, and then we've got the buffalo heads. This tank is still struggling to find its balance a little bit. The fish still growing out. I've also been feeding like a stupid amount. I've been testing so many foods that I probably have just overwhelmed this tank. Uh, but again, you can see here's like some blue green algae. Ooh, that looks nice. But the, the Anubis is like, I'm growing. Look at me. I'm releasing all this oxygen. I'm doing my thing. I'm pretty happy. So, and what I would say here is a lot of people go, oh, I've got algae, should I stop fertilizing? Should I turn off the light? Should I do all of the other things? And my answer is always no. Keep your plants growing really well and then make tweaks to fix. As in, okay, I'm gonna manually remove the algae and then maybe I turn my light down by 10 or 20%, and let that go for two or three weeks. Or maybe, yep, I did get nitrates too high, I was power feeding all the babies and all of this. 
or someone was feeding a different type of food while I was gone, and that caused an algae outbreak. Uh, but my, my answer is always don't turn off the fertilizer. You want your plants to grow well. And when algae's on them, they need the nutrients more than ever. They need to thrive while it's going, I can barely photosynthesize. So that's my advice. Now, you might have to tweak it, but I just wouldn't cut it off. That's what I'm saying. Next up, we've got the Nezzies. And so I, I can just move this guy, actually, this little uh, rainbow shark. He will eat hair algae pretty well, and he's kept this tank clean for me. He just needs to move over there. But again, dwarf Sagittaria, let me back up a little bit. Now, this got a lot taller. It used to be really short in, in the back, so we moved it to the front, and then it grew tall. How lame is that? We want it Now it blocks out the stuff in the back. But if we zoom in a little bit, you can see this stuff's pretty happy. There's bubbles releasing off of uh, you know all the plants and you can see the pearl or like the the plants the bubbles like underneath the leaves and there's tons of fry all throughout the the cover that the plant provides so going pretty good and really I attribute that to I got a real good poop layer going so I know there's a lot of people that are like they're all about natural I get it I prefer the hybrid of like well why not just use gravel something super easy to maintain and then build up your fish poop layer. You're basically making dirt. Uh, you can see some pygmy quarries hiding out in there too. That's my preferred method. And until I get there, I use root tabs. And I still supplement with root tabs every once in a while to get some of the other minerals. But that's my preferred method. I can, I can get my own fish poop going. And what I like about it, when I have to move a plant, it doesn't bring soil up that releases ammonia and all of that. I just get a little bit of fish poop mold, which is fine. I find it to be fine. I can also teach you how um, the plants spread. So you see this right here? That's actually a lead weight. I don't know why that's in there. Dwarf Sagittaria will bounce and bounce, and it goes underneath the gravel, and it can pop up right there. It can go above the gravel and pop up right here. You can see, you know, those keep crossing back and forth. Here it hit the end, so it's like dunk, 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 whoa, dunk, dunk. And it'll just keep getting more and more and more dense. So fun plant to make a, a whole thing. And that's where I was thinking about that tank with Valsneria that was so long. Let's take this and put that where the Valsneria is. That's a much better length to have what I'm trying to do in that tank. This tank here with the uh, Zenitaka Aizenai or Dordrai. These live bears. Crips kind of kind of going, yeah, I'm growing, but I don't love it. You know, they're releasing a little bit of a little bit of oxygen. You can see it on the edges of the Vesuvius enhance. There we go. Uh, so we the, the Vesuvius is it's all that that uh, squiggly plant as I call it. It is expanding, but uh, this tank hasn't hit balance. And a lot of times, what I think people don't realize is it takes six plus months easy to reach a balance after you've stopped making changes. So with this tank, what is the main problem? The main problem with this tank, honestly, is not enough fish. And you might be going, well, it seems like a lot, not for the way I run it. There's all these babies now, but this tank needs to populate more. They will clean up algae. They will clean up leftover food. The tank will reach an equilibrium with that amount of food going in. And right now I've been like overfeeding to feed the plants along with fertilizer and all of that. So, it, you know, it's just now the, the lilies recovering from the hydrogen peroxide. Remember, we killed basically a lot of the lily leaves. It's looking pretty good now, and it put up its first leaf again to the top. So, you know, it's, and there's some hidden underneath, right under there. Let me enhance, zoom in better. That kind of tiger stripe crypt right there underneath those, that's some crypt nuri. So it, it'll find its way here soon enough. Uh, now I'm going to go to the other side, way over there, it's got a bunch of new stuff. In the tanks that have way too much algae but do have fish like red madaka rice fish that look really good. Need to put some substrate in here, need to, you know, do a little bit of, a little bit of cleaning. And I say a little bit because I've got snails in here. I've got the uh, blueberry snails and I put them in here intentionally so it's like, yeah, feast on that. See if I can get a good shot of their foot right here. In, oh, there it is. 
Look how cool that foot looks. Look at the mouth. Enhance. I'll push it to the limit. There, that was the limit. Come on, come back, come back. Oh, once it loses focus, like, there we go. Come on, back to the limit. So you can see, he's just gonna cruise that whole tank looking for the munchies. So I've got lots of, uh, lots of stuff for them to be eating on. There's one upside down right there that fell off. There's some calcium in the tank. There's another one there. There's a bunch in there. And uh, are you gonna show us that you, you're picking at that? Yep, this is what fish do in the wild right there. Let me go pick at this algae. Let me look for stuff. So I've got those guys there. Down below, same setup, but white wizard snails. So another live bearing snail. Those blueberries are live bearers too. So kind of cool. Up here I bought some ribbon fin guppies. Look at that female guppy. It's a glass belly, so you can see the internals, like its stomach, its poop, and babies when it has it. So yeah, that like brown thing that whips around, that's poop. The gold in the back, that's the beginning of babies. Like embryos basically. And then they just gave birth to a batch. So like right at the top of the water, it's so hard to focus like that. Yeah, but they gave birth to like a group of 10. And so I've had these in my possession for like a week. So um, yeah, you get to see all that, all that poop wrapping around there, the long intestines on these guys. When it flips the other side, you'll see it way better. Come on. Yeah, look at all that. Very interesting and fun to see. This male is not ribbon fin gene, so it can breed with that and you can make more. That was always my, my downfall with the ribbon fin guys. All right, lots of kind of just, all these tanks are plant storage, like Anubias, they need to be set up, like almost nothing has gravel over here. Taking some product photos and stuff. Showing you guys you can use an Anker battery bank with our air pumps. So getting trying to get better at photography, product photography. And I've got more uh, floating Vesuvius. And so this is a tip I always have for people. When you get a plant and maybe you just don't, you don't want to plant it yet or it's struggling, maybe you don't have a strong light, you can float them. And they do well. These are just converted. That's all I've been doing is just floating them. I still dose fertilizer. And then when you're ready to go plant them, they're just ready to go. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of that method. All the stem plants, all that kind of stuff. We've got a bunch of algae and cherry shrimp just doing their thing. A lot of these tanks are just like, yeah, just get marinating, get ready, and uh, we'll deal with you when we deal with you. Let's see, what else do we got to show off? More plant kind of storage here. Oh yeah, these guys, these blood red or dragon red mollies, loving them. Might be the laziest mollies on the planet. They're not touching the halogen in the back. But I do love this male. This male looks good. The one on the bottom. The one on the top's okay, but that bottom one looks great. And a lot of these tanks have fry from when I was quarantining. Like, these are fry that have grown up. They need to be added to the golden, uh, like, snakeskin guppies. Just fry. And then if we scroll down here, more fry. These, I think, are the best guppies in the world. I gotta grow them out more to make sure. But uh, these are all crypts that I've just been... So these were the ones, we planted these crypts, the ones that look really good, the crypt Wendedi. They've just been sitting in the pots doing nothing here in like a stasis mode. And they just provide cover for the, the plants, or I mean the, the fish. So let me go over here, we have the knife lie bearer, Alfero colstratus. And uh, they're showing off terribly right now, but Lots of little babies. So that's always fun. They got a nice blue eye that doesn't show up well on camera. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always happy to see stuff pushing forward. Then we've got these mollies here, which this male I'm not too impressed with. He can't breed. He's, he's lame because his gonopodium is huge. But this female, and then I, I really do like the male that's hiding back here. But he's just hiding, so it doesn't look very good. And then down below, we've got Duckweed City. I just moved a couple of Shabunkins in there to start doing their jab and eat all that for me. And then here we've got algae that looks kind of cool, I think, and four billion cherry shrimps. So, yeah, I'm gonna grab my, my wheelie stool. I wanted to add some color into this 125, so I ordered the saffron mollies from Dance fish, there's the, the pregnant female. 
And then there's the mail. And I just, I just, I'm really enjoying Molly's in general and just live bears again. I trimmed up the tank so that only the, the valve is in the corners and it's going to go across the back only to the other side. It keeps trying to break out as you can see like in the corners and I have to keep trimming it back. No babies yet or really much color from the Cypochromus. That's what these sardine looking cichlids are. Uh, we did put uh, some candy stripe plecos in here, which is an unusual pairing for sure. You can see there's this one right here, if it'll... Yeah, so I gave those originally to Dean, he bred them, and then he brought me some back, so I like that. You can see here that the, the plants are, are purling. Again, and, and I guess I, what I want to say is, there's so many people say with an air stone or a sponge filter you can't do this, and my opinion is like, it, it, I don't know, it does it really well for me and it always has at the store and if you have good light and you're putting in fertilizer, I think the airstone helps. Now if you're injecting CO2, you don't need the help from the airstone for the CO2, but you need it for oxygen. So I like having good agitation. Let me go right over here. This might be the most expensive tank. Those six fish right there that look terrible because they're stressed out. They're new, they're not colored up yet, take like another year to color up. Each one of those guys from Dan's Fish was $50 for these African Tetras. I think they're something Burchardi, and uh, they look amazing a year from now. For right now, you're like, why would you buy those? And then a year from now, you'll be like, I need to buy those. So, but uh, there's still some stuff I want to shoot setting up this tank and, and some stuff I want to do. Um, you know, I need to do videos on, people ask like, how, how deep can the air pump go? Well, I had these hooked up and I was shooting video and they were running uh, these sponge filters. Uh, and you can see here, this is, this is an improperly, in my opinion, improper install on a sponge filter in that it's below the surface. And this is a proper one where it's kind of above the surface. So same amount of air going into each one, but you get much better flow when it's like right at the surface level versus being under. So, you know, slight optimizations, nothing huge. And uh, yeah, I only put two lights on this one so far, so I got two more I can put on. We're bringing in some tissue cultures, just FYI. Um, the one that we have on the website right now is this mini hair grass. Comes like this, pretty nice. These were my test ones. We also want to bring these in, but the problem we have with basically Tropica, anytime we try to buy something from them, they're like, we'll take 800 or not, not 800. Let's say, let's say we go, we want 200 of those. They go, cool, we have six. I'm like what? And so I ordered, I ordered uh, these, these, and these. So these are Kripnuri, and this is uh, Beast of Land Needle Leaf, and they zeroed us on all of these and sent us some of these. So. We're gonna try, we're working with them, like make more, we wanna try selling them. Uh, they're about, I think they're about $12.99, maybe $14.99 for the abuses. Um, yeah. And they're just small plant starts. You can see all that, that tiger stripe look to these guys. A lot of roots. And uh, so while not big plants, we I'm focusing on getting the rarer type of varieties that aren't as easy to get. So, you know, we're not, we're definitely not going to carry like, oh, why don't you carry 50 different ones? Because you don't need to. Uh, but there are some rarer types of plants that are like, well, that one kind of makes sense. I also want to make sure we can develop good product pages and that people be successful. I don't want to sell you a plant that's so rare and so hard to grow that you just kill it. And then you go, hey, your plant bad. And we don't like that either. So, uh, if we go over here, what you're going to see here, there's no Elmer. Elmer went to the store today, so he's now in Murphy's tank, which means I'm going to overhaul this tank. I'm thinking it might become Clown Loach City, change the lighting a little bit. I realize it looks pretty dark. Yes, we've got the Rasbora Hets in there, and we've got the Corydoras, and we've got the Cupido Cichlids still. So, around the corner, Ladybird. Ladybird long term will go to the 1500 gallon. I shouldn't say obviously, this is an 800 gallon. 
And as you can see, we've made about 4 billion more trout goodyeads. They've been breeding up an absolute storm in here. And uh, not only have they been breeding up an absolute storm, so have the hillstream loaches. There are like, I don't know, at least 100. If you just look at this rock right here, right? Start counting them. There's one, there's two, there's three, at least. I get four, I can see at least four. And you start looking at most of the rocks and they're that way. And then you start seeing like, oh, they're in the, in the shell work and the gravel swimming around. Like there's so many they've been breeding here, which is cool to see. Isn't that right, ladybird? You're a good mom. So this tank, you know, been growing really well. Ladybird, every time a clam gets over here, she, she acts as a lawnmower and uh, trims down the plants. So I'll be excited when you go to the 1500 gallon. I think we're gonna use a lot of crypts because you seem to leave those alone. Look how good these crypts look. Like these look great. And I've always done crypts usually and I, I change it up, but I think I'll just do more and more crypts with the Mabu because they seem not to chomp them on accident. Look at that one back there. Tasty. Isn't that right, Ladybird? You're looking to get twice as big an aquarium, right? And so Ladybird is basically, uh, as far as I know, the same age as Murphy was. Murphy was over nine. I didn't go all the way back to like fully document it, but I bought three of them originally all at the same time. And they fought. They were just little babies. And at feeding time, they would fight. The rest of the time, they're fine. So I sold two other ones. Eventually, like three, I think it was six months later, one of them came back. They're like, hey, do you want it? It's getting too big. And I said, yeah, I'll take it. And that was Ladybird. So I took Ladybird home. And uh, so Ladybird seems to be thriving and, and doing everything, whereas uh, Murphy went I was kind of going blind, having troubles eating. And then out of nowhere, after a live stream, after I told people, I'm like, yeah, he's kind of not doing so hot. We're going to move him into a more chill tank, like a retirement home. He literally lost his equilibrium and, and died the next day. So it was weird. Maybe, maybe I caused it because I talked about him, but, uh, you know. We, we tried for over a year, like, is this vision? Let's try different foods. He wouldn't eat any any live foods anymore, like, like crabs or snails or anything. And, and Ladybird won't. Like, there's tons of snails in here. She just won't. She's like, no, I wait for the clams, buddy. Uh, we've got the flagtail Prochilotus in here. We call it the Alice in Wonderland fish. That's a good algae eater. And then we've got the, got the old uh, rainbow shark in there as well. So yeah, algae's receding, not completely gone, but you can see, so when I'm talking about taking time, this plant used to be just absolutely covered in algae. And now you're like, okay, well there's some algae there, there's some there, but there's a lot of just new green growth that's good. And I've got a lot of algae eaters in there, like all of these trout goodias can eat some algae, all the reticulated hillstream loaches can eat algae, not this type really. But then you've got uh, the flagtail, he can eat this type of algae, and you've got the red tail shark, and they can eat this type of algae. And so over time, it's, it's slowly turning that tide. I haven't done a whole lot. The only thing I really did, and I made sure I was dosing easy green, got the doser going again. And uh, that's really, I just make sure we get enough food for the plants and the fish going in, and let the fish do their thing. That's really, there's also, uh, horse face loaches in here but they hide so well it's hard to get them on camera unless you feed and you sit for a while you can see right here here's a snail here's another nerite snail there's a baby reticulated hillstream loach right there and you can see here's one of the adults right here with a tank this big you can have so many fish and you can't you can only see like a fifth of any one time these guys are hungry. I'll show you guys how I feed it because it'll blow your mind. Because I, I love feeding the 800 gallon because people are like, you wrong. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, they eat it and they love it. So here's one batch of food, which we won't go to uh, like market with this food, if you will. But I just I grab a, a cup and I get like at least that much flake food for the goodies and everything. And just in it goes. Make it snow. Like it will snow. And so you need the food, like the food has to get all the way down here because there's all these babies, all the big ones grab it all. And you also need it to rest for like the babies back in the plants, like all of those reticulated hillstream loaches. So it, it, it's like a snow globe effect is what I call it. 
you get this big, you get all the big baddies up top, and they're just chowing down. And you've got this, you know, this gyre pump, so all the water is kind of doing this big circle movement. And then I come back and I feed with uh, clams for Ladybird. But yeah, it's it's an absurd amount of food, no doubt, like that. But there is an absurd amount of fish, and if you want to create a scenario where you know, the baby babies back here are eating. Like way back in this corner and all the stuff hiding out in here and that reticulated hillstream loach on the wall, you have, well, I shouldn't say you have to. I find I have to. I have to really get a bunch of food in there because, you know, it looks like a lot, but it's like confetti. It's, there's not a lot to it. So one fish like this can eat so much flake food. And so they also... There's a pecking order to the fish, and they want it to settle down. you got to wait for it to get in the nooks and the crannies. And just, yeah, everywhere you look, baby, hundreds of baby fish. Like, look how many just moving reticulated hillstream loaches you can see just, just in this little six-inch area of this giant tank. So, and if you, you come over here, like, look at all the baby hillstream loaches and everything. And if you get, like, a different angle, like, look at all the baby fish... And down here that are those guys. Even over here, you just keep coming. You're like, hey, there's more baby reticulated hailstream loaches. So that's what I find. You need, you need. I find you need this. You need the the food to get back in those plants. You need to get it to same thing. I find the same thing you need with like shell dwellers, cypochromus. There's a lot of fish that do much better when there's a flood of food, so that they can go eat on their own and not have to compete for it. Because all these babies, they're not going to go to war to get fed. They're going to stay... Oh, yeah, here's a hillstream loach. Finally came out. This, this big striped guy. Let's see if I can get you some action without scaring him off. Come on, bud. So, yeah, even those guys, you got to get them to come out of the gravel to eat. And after... Oh, there's another one. Boom. Big old guy. So these... There's like 15 of these big dudes in here. And they love to, to surf the sand, like sift through it. And so, again, you got to kind of get it all over the place. If you want these super babies to eat, you want all the big guys to eat. Yeah, you know, there's three of them now. They're coming out. And even though we just walked around the tank for like five minutes straight, you didn't see a single one. They'll keep coming out. And they go, hey, the food's out, guys. Time to chow. But yeah, it, and it takes about 10 minutes. After about 10 minutes, this will be all eaten up. Um, it, it definitely, if I sit down across the room, they, they go more into eating. Because sometimes I'll feed it this way, and then there's bloodworms and cyclops and other foods. So they're making sure they don't miss out on that. But yeah, it's a. Uh, if you were just to put in, like, I put in three wafers and some clams, like, that doesn't do a tank like this. Like, you know, if you have a 55, it's like. Cool. Ten of those is only 550 gallons. How much do you feed, like, 15 55-gallon tanks? That all has to go into this tank. So, that, like, if it would be at least 15 cubes of bloodworms, if you're only feeding one cube, but on a 55, you might feed two or three. And so now, all of a sudden, you're feeding, like, a pack and a half of bloodworm cubes to do a tank like this justice at this density. So... All right, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the tour. Hopefully you learned a little a little nugget of something. Maybe you just fell in love with horse face loaches even though you only get to see them. Well, maybe I can get you a good view of like why they call them the horse face loach. They got the long snout to them. Fun fish, but you, you don't get to see them a whole lot and they like to burrow, so. But, you know, I was surprised. They don't eat anybody else's babies, it seems like. I haven't bred any of these guys yet that I know of. Oh man, I would lose it if I did but kind of an underappreciated fish because they're not super colorful, but fun. I like just having different loaches and things. And I look, see now the rocks, you see how they're coated in the food and now the babies can, can, can feed on it. And you look at this rock, same thing. He's waiting, he's going, oh, let me find the foods on here. So I guess I'm just trying to justify me feeding a ton of food because people lose their minds and I don't really need to because the success in look at all of the fish that are ma being made in this tank and the other thing I would, I would point out in a big tank like this, every week there's probably like 30 more fish. So in a month, it's like, well, you're feeding another 120 mouths. In six months, you're feeding another 1,000 fish. 
And so it can, it's like growing Daphne. It can get out of control without you even realizing it. So I try to make sure that we're feeding enough, uh, that no one has to go hungry and you don't want to see sunken in bellies. You know, a guy like this is still pretty skinny, but now he's getting to eat. He's never going to be a boisterous eater. He's going, oh, I'll, I'll surf through the cracks here while everybody else, and that's what they're all doing. They all go, okay, now that it's settled down, let's look for it. So, all right, guys, thanks for hanging out. Uh, hopefully it was enjoyable. Uh, next video, probably somewhere in Germany, and then after that, probably going to set up some tanks for clown loaches and goldfish and other stuff. And I'm going to retrieve some meds, too. So, uh, thanks, and we'll see you. Oh, yeah, million subscribers. I know when this comes out, that has already happened and everything, and the live stream will already happen, but I am super stoked and uh, just didn't want to forget about it. Sometimes you're filming so far in advance, you forget, and then it looks like you didn't care. Super cared. In fact, you can see it right over here, right next to the, the OG wall, as I'll call it. I've had this thing so long that some of the LEDs burnt out. Uh, so I got the million, we got the, the taco hat, we've got all the all the little stuff over the years. Look at that, the original fish fam. Got the glasses, all the little knickknacks over the years. So thank you guys so much. Old shirts even. Oh, that is terrible lighting. The Murfster and the original shirt. All, all the little heirlooms from over the years. It took... Basically, I, th I have to look, like 10 years, nine years to hit the million. So long-term goal achieved, and I'm out.